On behalf of the Area Agency on Aging of Pasco Pinellas, I welcome you to Aging on the Sun Coast. The National Center on Elder Abuse indicates that 12% of all elder abuse reports involve financial exploitation of an elder. As part of our programming, we have discussed consumer fraud and we've discussed Medicare fraud, but today we're going to learn specifically about insurance fraud. Joining us to discuss this topic is Carl Rushke, a law enforcement detective with the Division of Insurance Fraud. Welcome, Carl, to Aging on the Sun Coast. Good morning. Thank nice you. to be here. Good to have you. Um, let's talk, start by talking about the fact that the Division of Insurance Fraud is part of the Florida Department of Financial Services. But share with us, I wasn't aware that there was a Division of Insurance Fraud, so, and I'm sure many of our viewers have not heard of that either. So please tell us what, what their role is. Well, we are the law enforcement uh, division of the Department of Financial Services. Uh, we investigate uh, matters of insurance fraud, whether it happens to be uh, false claims that are submitted, uh, workers' compensation fraud, uh, PIP fraud, uh, and when uh, insured uh, may submit uh, false documents okay. in, in support of their claims. Okay. so. As being part of the Division of Financial Services, you want to be sure that insurance is used properly. Correct. Um, and to take action if it is not. Yes. But you are there to assist the consumer through that process if it has been, um, if their rights as a consumer have not been um, fulfilled. Correct. Okay. Let's, um, I know that there is a campaign by the Division of Financial Services to make us as residents of Florida more aware of um, the Department of Financial Services and what their scope of services are. Um, and that is now the SAFE campaign. Tell us about that. Well, the SAFE program is initiated by CFO Jeff Atwater. It's the Stop Adult Financial Exploitation. And it's a program that's in place to help seniors not become victims. 70% mm -hmm. um, of the na uh, nation's wealth is held by seniors, which makes them an easy target. Okay, and certainly um, the impact upon seniors when they are um, the target mm -hmm. of exploitation can be far greater than it is upon a younger person because their earning capacity, their ability to replace those resources is not there. It can plunge them into financial ruin and there are many other consequences to that. It is good to know that the state of Florida is taking that so seriously and addressing it. I assume that some of um, the safe information is about prevention as well as about reporting. Correct. Okay. Right. We uh, work with the seniors, uh, those who become victims, uh, mm -hmm. we work with them to prosecute offenders mm -hmm. uh, and make an effort through, uh, through a prosecution to uh, get restitution back with, through the state attorney's office uh, okay. from the offenders. Okay. When you, um, as part of the SAFE program, are there ongoing presentations in the community? Do you have anything coming up? Uh, correct. Uh, on May 14th, uh, we have a workshop that's going to be held at the uh, Aging Well Center mm -hmm. uh, in Clearwater. Uh, it's at 1501 North Belcher, uh, and it's going to be held uh, at uh, 11 a.m. Starts at 11. Okay, and so people, anyone in the community can come to that presentation? Correct. And I assume it's free since it's sponsored by the state of Florida? Yes. Very good. So that's, an, uh, that's another opportunity to learn um, more about some of the things that we're going to discuss today. Correct. It's an ed education process geared to mm -hmm. not having our seniors become victims. Very good. Um, talk with us some about the types of insurance fraud that can occur. In my mind, insurance is homeowner's insurance, health insurance, um, property insurance. Um, what are some of the types of scams or victimization that can occur in those areas? Well, when you uh, reference uh, homeowners, mm -hmm. uh, sometimes policyholders, if they become a victim of a crime, will overinflate the uh, claim process to their company, maybe the submission of false receipts mm -hmm. uh, or events that didn't occur, that d did not occur. So. Uh, we uh, look into those. Uh, we investigate um, matters of uh, annuity fraud. You know, our seniors 
who I said have the money, uh, in, invest with companies that uh, will provide them a payout over a specific period of time. Mm -hmm. And sometimes during this, the application process in right. qualifying for mm -hmm. uh, an annuity, mm -hmm. um, certain liberties, we'll say, are taken in uh, completing the suitability form. Mm, which tell is me what a suitability form a is. Su a suitability form is, it's basically like an application. Okay. The insurance companies don't want to take all the seniors' money. They want to make sure that what's invested mm -hmm. is a, a good investment for them, but doesn't leave them uh, insurance poor. It's a risk that I can take. Correct. Okay, without plunging me into financial ruin. Correct. Okay. Uh, and sometimes during this application process, mm -hmm. maybe the questions on the suitability right. form aren't accurately uh, documented. The um, is, it's an insurance agent who's going to be selling this product. Correct. And they have the responsibility to complete that form for anyone, or is it just seniors that have to complete that the, form? The, it's a process with the agent working with the uh, senior consumer who's ever purchasing okay. this. Okay. And and if if I were to answer it correctly, there's a possibility that I could not obtain that product because a decision would be made that I don't have sufficient resources to be investing in that type of product. Correct. Um, okay. There could be an overstatement of one's wealth. Okay. There could be a downplaying of one's health. Right. Um, and if the questions aren't um, accurately uh, documented, when the policy goes into effect or say several years down mm -hmm. the road, um, there may be uh, an opportunity for the policy not to be put in, into place right. because there's a, a lie is discovered. Okay. And I know 20 years ago, so many seniors invested their money in certificates of deposit with mm -hmm. the bank because the returns on them were pretty mm -hmm. substantial. Um, increasingly over the years, though, the interest rate has dwindled. And so the rate of return, which is oftentimes the income that a senior is dependent to live on, is not um, sufficient, so they start to look for different financial products um, that would provide to them um, a better yield, and that's when they begin to look at some of what I would consider a, a more sophisticated financial instrument, such as an annuity, but they have the responsibility to understand what they are getting into, to understand something like a minimum guarantee or, a, you know, as, as lay people, we're not trained to know those terms, but we need to be cautioned that we need to understand and ask questions. Correct. Asking questions is what we strive to have them okay. do. Um, the fact that it's a new process for them you know, right. it may be confusing. Mm -hmm. uh, we ask that they verify the information that's put on the applications. And I also would like to say that it's also good to have a second person sit with you during this process right. and other sets of eyes and ears to help someone understand the, uh, the purchase. And so often we say that, Carl, about many areas of purchases that not to be rushed into making a decision, um, you know, to take your time, not necessarily to make the decision during that discussion with the person who is selling the product to you. And then also this concept of having another trusted party um, either be there with you or at least to say, you know, I'm going to review this with my son, my daughter, my attorney, um, you know, my friend down the street just so it takes the pressure off of you to make a decision and gives you someone else's eyes to help. Correct. The second um, person is good. And the uh, state of Florida also has a 14-day free look period oh. where if you should make such a purchase and you find out that it does not fit your financial needs, you have the ability to rescind it within that time frame. Is that true for any insurance product or just specifically annuities? Uh, through uh, most insurance products. Okay. It, and even uh, it's mandated that it's 14 days, but several uh, companies will extend that free look period to 30 days. Oh, okay. Um, what are some of the other things that we should be, um, that are happening in terms of insurance fraud? Well, uh, presently, you know, there's uh, cases that we're investigating in the, the Tampa Bay area that uh, my squad covers. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the uh, things that's going on now happens to be a uh, well, windshield replacement. Mm -hmm. um, everyone who has comprehensive insurance okay. has uh, free glass replacement. Okay. And we're finding out that 
uh, seniors are being approached uh, via a cold call mm -hmm. and being told that they're entitled to a uh, free windshield mm -hmm. and possibly being coached to have this windshield replaced when the glass in their car is in perfectly fine condition. Okay. Um, um, that, that's where the fraud comes in when the particular salesperson mm -hmm. may instruct or coach the senior into saying key words to their insurance companies for this replacement glass. And you know, originally, um, in thinking about the show, I'm thinking in terms of the consumer being the victim. And here you might think that the insurance company becomes the victim of that type of scan. But really, we as a consumer become a secondary victim because if they're paying for windshields that don't need to be replaced, you and I are going to be paying for that in terms of our insurance premiums. Higher premiums. Yes. Okay. So we have a responsibility to be good stewards of our insurance policies, that they are not used inappropriately. Correct. Okay. Um, I know that we talked some, let's talk some about uh, other abuses in insurance sales that we should be, um, that should raise red flags with us if we are approached by an insurance agent. Okay. Uh, you know, some of the red flags are um, you don't need to be rushed. You know, please, uh, you know, right. verify. There, there is no you must sign today. Mm -hmm. um, that goes uh, into, you know, again, if you have a resource with you, uh, you, and you have a better understanding right. of what uh, is transpiring, then there's no need to have to jump in to, to get it done at this moment. Um, should we, should we be checking to, to make sure that the insurance agent is licensed? Correct. That the company is in good standing? How do we do that check? Uh, there are, there's an avenue, uh, myfloridalicense.com allows you to go online to see if uh, your agent is in fact licensed mm -hmm. and the product that they're marketing to you happens to be a product to be sold in the state of Florida. Okay, and then should I, should they be able to give me a copy at, when they're selling it to me, what should I be getting in writing that I can look at and understand what is included and not included in that policy? Well, uh, you can go online to verify the uh, salesperson's uh, license status. Okay. Uh, and if, like I said, if there's any uh, questions, specifically if you're talking about the, an agent mm -hmm. or whatever, um, there's that online, uh, or you can call the, uh, the hotline right. uh, in Tallahassee mm -hmm. and just uh, obtain some information. Okay. As a matter of fact, uh, in Largo, we have a consumer services division, mm -hmm. and they frequently handle calls from consumers that may not ar arise to uh, being a fraud matter, but just helps the seniors, the consumers in general, right. assist them in their uh, claims or answering any questions that they have. Um, is an insurance agent allowed to show up at my doorstep, knock on the door, and discuss with me a policy if I haven't uh, initiated that? Well, he can. Request. However, uh, I'd be very leery about that. Okay. You know, uh, it's usually the consumer who uh, shows an interest in making some change or making a new purchase. Okay. Mm -hmm. And again, it goes back to this concept, and the same would hold true with the windshield scam. If if I didn't need that product before you appeared on my doorstep, why do I need it now? Correct. Um, you know, to use common sense, that just because someone knocks on my door or comes to my car and, and indicates that, you know, I, I have a need. Um, I didn't have that need yesterday. I need to re-examine that. N not all the, uh, these windshield replacement companies are uh, committing fraud. You know, sometimes, you know, they, they happen to see from the street that mm -hmm. uh, glass may be, need to be replaced and act appropriately, but uh, it's a problem at the moment uh, dealing with the seniors who make it easily confused and not understand their right. claim process. Right. Um, you've given us a really good idea of, of some of the events that can occur, mm -hmm. and we're going to take a break now, but when we come back in the second segment, I want to talk specifically about how to report um, if you think something um, suspicious has occurred. Mm -hmm. And we will be running the telephone number of the tip line um, so that you as viewers during the break can get your pencils and paper and be ready to take that number down. Um, we will be back shortly.
Look, here's a charge for something we didn't order. Good catch. I don't think you should ever pay for any bill unless you have first made sure that all the charges are correct. Speaking of which, have you heard of the latest Medicare scams? Mm -hmm. This happened to my friend. A man came to her door claiming he was from Medicare. He had a smooth line about helping seniors with the high cost of their medicines, but she had to give him her Medicare number right then before the deadline. Well, when she got her Medicare summary notice, it was full of charges for services she hadn't received. Turns out this guy was a scam artist. Medicare already has everyone's number. They wouldn't need to ask for it. Scams like these hurt every taxpayer, draining billions from Medicare and making it harder for people like us to get the health benefits we're entitled to. So I did something about it. I joined the Senior Medicare Patrol, where I work with other volunteers to teach my neighbors how to protect their Medicare numbers, review statements to spot false charges and detect errors, and report suspected fraud. During the first segment of our show today, we've been talking about insurance fraud with Carl Rushke, who is a law enforcement detective in the Division of Insurance Fraud. And during the first segment, he shared with us some of the examples of fraud that can occur. And of course, our question then is, if we, if we have observed one of these occurring in our life, what do we do about it? How do we report it? There's several methods in which you can uh, report uh, fraud to our division. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a hotline. Uh, the number is 1-800-378-0445. Um, it's a telephone call. You can provide them information based upon uh, what you f uh, foresee to be any wrongdoing, what the fraud is. There's an, also an opportunity to uh, remain anonymous. Uh, for those that are more computer savvy, uh, there's a website through the CFO's office, uh, through myfloridacfo.com. Uh, uh, there's a uh, section in there where you can type in a fraud referral. Oh, okay. And uh, my local office, which is in St. Petersburg, uh, we can be contacted in the office at 727-563-1142. Okay. And... Um I understand that there is actually a reward program in some circumstances for a tip that is provided? Yes, there is. Uh, we offer a $25,000 reward for information leading to an arrest and conviction in a complex insurance case. Okay, so that's a way, an incentive to the public that they could get up to $25,000 if it is something that is material to uh, a prosecution or bringing... In, your organization has the responsibility to make sure that the insurance products out there are reputable and to support the reputable insurance agents and to get those that are not out of, off the market. Correct. Of, okay. Um, what happens after report is made? Well, the, uh, the report, which we refer to as a tip, mm -hmm. uh, is uh, entered in, in Tallahassee and mm -hmm. it's filtered down through uh, a referral system. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the tips are sent to the area captain who reviews them and then they're dispersed to the respective field offices. Uh, my office, of which there's seven detectives, we cover uh, seven counties here huh? from uh, Hernando to Sarasota and from Pinellas uh, to Polk County. So uh, the, the captain then assigns the, uh, the tips uh, based upon the different uh, uh, crimes. And are you looking both at patterns of abuse um, to see if, if there's a pattern that a particular company, a particular agent is um, taking actions that are getting reported to the tip line um, frequently and, and going after that type of uh, individual or agency, or are you investigating every single tip that comes to you? Every tip gets uh, reviewed, whether or not uh, the uh, the referral uh, would arise to being fraud. Sometimes mm -hmm. we can't always prosecute every case. Right. Uh, and uh, if it's like a group, mm -hmm. as you mentioned, uh, that, that case will get assigned and remain with the squad. And then it just starts the uh, prosecution and, you know, working with the uh, respective state attorney's office. What type of teeth do you have? What, what are some of the results that can happen as, as I call in a tip? Um, what could happen as a result of that? Well, if it's anonymous a tip, we mm -hmm. have the ability in which to take the alleged suspect's name, mm -hmm. find out if uh, they have ever had a claim uh, mm -hmm. through, a through a database, mm -hmm. uh, contact that respective insurance company, ask them some of the parameters, 
uh, share with the insurance companies the information that's been provided to us. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, the, uh, somebody's out on workers' compensation, yet mm -hmm. they have a full-time job that okay. would raise the ire of someone who uh, uh, knows, you know, a, a hardworking individual, and we would start the process that way and uh, initiate an investigation. Okay, so um, I also want to let our viewers know that if someone feels that they have been a victim of fraud, um, that we as an area agency on aging have a victim advocate program for any person over the age of 60 who has been a victim of any crime, and that includes insurance fraud. That We can help them through the process of filling out paperwork, um, actually doing a home visit to sit down and discuss with them what their needs are. So often seniors who have been a victim of financial exploitation, which this would be, um, it has an impact upon them emotionally. Um, it has an impact upon them in terms of their ability to meet their daily needs um, with resources. And as an area agency on aging, we can step up to the plate and try to get them the services that they need. Um, some of your cases go to court, um, and the, the senior can be a witness. We can go to court with them. Um, we can go to court um, and sit and observe if they don't need to be there that day and report back to them. Um, but we, fortunately, the Office of the Attorney General provides funding to our agency because they understand that seniors, um, there is a more significant impact on a senior who um, may be precarious to begin with because of health situation or just the frailty of advanced age. Um, and they want to help in this process of making the individual whole. I know that you have talked yes. about that concept too. For, for your organization. Uh, correct. Not, not every uh, case is prosecutable, mm -hmm. okay? But if there's uh, evidence of fraud uh, through uh, two other agencies that we work closely with, uh, the Division of Consumer Services and uh, agent and agency that regulates the conduct of the agents, mm -hmm. we at times have been able to go back to the companies that say wrote these policies that are highly questionable, say, for the conduct of the agents and work with them to, again, uh, make the consumer whole, have the policy rescinded and uh, proceed from there. And sometimes there can actually be restitution of monies to Correct. the individual? Yep. Okay. Some, some of these companies, uh, because the agents mm -hmm. who, who represent them may have taken some inappropriate action, which goes back to the application and suitability form being uh, some wrong answers being applied, the companies will uh, make the consumer whole again. Which is, speaks well of the insurance industry. Correct. That they want to be known, their reputation is on the line. They want, they want to stand behind their product um, and make sure that the consumer um, was treated well. Correct. Um, we, during the break, we're talking about um, how to do research um, to, so that you are informed about your agent, um, companies that you deal with, and you had suggested you can do a Google search on an agent name. Tell us. Uh -huh. Something as simple as a Google search uh -huh. uh, will help you uh, determine uh, the conduct of your agent. Uh, as a quick story, a couple of years ago, I had a lady that went to one of these seminars, mm -hmm. uh, you know, the free lunch, walked right. away, had signed up for a program. She was contacted by an agent. Uh, to uh, market an insurance product to her. Uh, she, in turn, at times became uncomfortable during this process, mm -hmm. went online, did a Google search on this Clearwater-based agent, found out that uh, he had been previously arrested, that he was uh, presently on probation, that his license to sell insurance had been revoked. This is part of that verification process that worked mm -hmm. out. She came to our office uh, with a friend of hers. We were able to uh, put together a little sting operation uh, because if he continued to sell insurance, that was a felony, mm -hmm. and he was revoked uh, and a probation violation. He was to distance himself from the insurance business. Well, he went back to what he knew, and he's presently incarcerated until December of 2014. Okay, and that all started with a Google search. Correct. You know, and that brings up the point. So often we need to trust our instincts. You know, if, if there's a bell going off in, in your head, you need to listen to it and do some more research. And, and I, um, I know from our victim advocate program, many intelligent, capable people become victims. Um, they are 
either purchasing something that is not their field of expertise um, or you know they haven't done the research that they need to do but no one is um, immune to no being immune. a victim and and the scam artists are one step ahead of us so much of the time they that's their profession and oftentimes they're very intelligent people who are putting their talents to poor use um, <laughs> correct so you can um, you can never sit back and say it won't happen to me um, it happens to many good people and pick up pick up the phone call the tip mm. hotline if you feel that it is correct convenient. if you're uncomfortable there are um, there is help out there and avenues which you can pursue uh, to learn more about uh, what you're getting involved with I know on um, when we have had other consumer fraud um, consumer protection programs um, and Medicare fraud programs. We talk about protecting your social security number, um, protecting your Medicare number, treat it as though you would treat your credit card. You wouldn't hand that over to just anyone. Um, so often we were asked for that information and we just blindly hand it over. Um, and of course, if you have been provided a medical service, it's appropriate to give your Medicare number, but not to someone who calls you on the phone. We need to take that same type of precautions with our insurance information so that it's not out there too? Uh, correct. Um, once you provide your information to someone, mm -hmm. although uh, at that time, it may be just a sales pitch, you may never know what happens in future claim claims that are made in your name mm -hmm. and you were never, uh, this is something you never consented to. Right. Um, and seniors can oftentimes be victims because they are so trusting. Um, they grew up in a generation of trust, oftentimes in smaller communities where they knew with whom they were dealing. Um, and it's, it's a different world out there now. Uh, correct. Uh, and having someone uh, with you to verify the information, uh, to listen to uh, the uh, product, new product that's being uh, you know pitched to you uh, mm -hmm. as a as a good investment, uh, what, like an annuity, it always helps to have that other person with you uh, for reassurance that you're making the right decision. Right. So there's no uh, need to rush into this. Right. Um, you have shared wonderful information with us today. I, again, we started the show without me knowing uh, much about what, um, what the Division of Insurance Fraud would cover, and you've shared with us not only what it can look like, um, but how to report it, what you do about it, and then I think some very good tips about how to prevent it, which is the most important point at all, of all, um, not to have it happen in the first place. Thank you so very much for what you do, and also for joining uh, us today to share that valuable information with our audience. I'm very glad to be here. Thank you. Um, and I appreciate you as viewers for joining us today. I hope this information has been helpful to you. Hi, I'm William Maypother. I play Ethan Rahm on the TV show Lost. Let me tell you about a truly lost population. Every single day, Thousands of our elderly citizens are subjected to abuse, emotional, financial, physical. Worse, the majority of people who commit these acts are those closest to the victim. Please join me in the fight to end elder abuse. It's time to speak up. Our elders deserve better.